Okay, I'm going to answer the burning question of how to make the greatest gorgonzola bread you've ever had. This recipe, I don't know if this is uh, how to go about telling you how this happened, but um, I used to go to this place on the Upper East Side in New York, this little Italian place up in the 80s somewhere around 2nd Avenue, and the, they used to give you this French bread with this gorgonzola cream all over it. Here I am now, 25 years later, and I decided to resurrect this item because it was so nice. We used to go there just to eat it. And now as it turns out, I've ended up serving this to hundreds of people and now every single person has liked it. So I decided to include it in our appetizers. So that's what we have here. Gorgonzola bread with gorgon, or yeah, gorgonzola bread. Um, grilled and or roasted French bread. So I'm going to start this out by getting some glazed onions made or semi-glazed or sauteed onions. And I got a pan with some olive oil here, and I have some sliced white onions, okay? I'm going to try to do all of this in real time in terms of how long it takes to make this from start to finish, okay? In this pan, I'm going to make the gorgonzola cream. And I'm going to start by putting some cream in this pan, like so. Probably got about a cup and a half in there. And now I have some gorgonzola cheese here. I'm going to put some of that directly into the cream. This is a simple recipe, but it's awfully good. I got about, I don't know, I'm pushing a cup of cheese there. Two-thirds of a cup so far. But you're going to see how fast this is made. You're not going to believe it. I'm going to put a little bit of pepper in here. And back to the onion. I'm going to put some fresh thyme in here with the onions. And we're going to put a little bit of pepper and salt here on the onion. Then I'm going to add a little bit of water to this so it'll completely kill it. Now you'll notice the gorgonzola cream over here. Let me get a tasting spoon here. Um, is quick. And I'm going to pull that off for a second. And let's get a little taste of that. It's already done. I'm shutting this burner off. And it's already good, the gorgonzola cream. Uh, you can, sometimes if you want to make a little larger amount, you can thicken it up with some roux if you want. Or you can just reduce the cream the way I did there that quickly with that cheese. This sauce is done right now. I put a little bit of pepper in it, and you want to be careful you don't be putting salt in this because it might make it too salty, okay? Now the onion is cooking right along. So while the onion is cooking, um, I'm going to take some of the French bread, and I'm going to put some garlic butter on it, and I'm going to pop it in the oven. Now I pre-grilled another piece of bread that I want you to see which is right here. So now you can, if you do it grilled, I like it grilled, but if you don't have a grill and you want to still serve this item, you can just put your garlic butter. You know, we have a garlic butter video here. Put your garlic butter on the bread. The bread's pre-baked already. Then you just pop it in your oven. Let it get hot. See, that thing sucked up all that water already. I'm adding a little more water. I want to get the onions kind of nice and soft. And I think I'm going to raise the temperature on that oven real quick. There we go. That gorgonzola cream was quick and easy. I'll tell you something, of all the people I've served this item, this is like a gooey, messy appetizer kind of thing. Of all the people that I've served this to, I kid you not when I tell you not a single person has ever said, God, this is really good. So this is one of those kind of items. Doesn't cost too much, kind of unique, easy to pre-prepare. You can have the onions made in advance. You can make the sauce in advance. You can bake the bread, have it all buttered in advance. And I have a little tomato conca save. We're going to put on it for garnish. I have a video for the tomato conca save, of course, which you need to go to if you want to use it. But there's all kinds of versions of this that you can do that include things like 
you could add mushrooms to this. You could add sliced wild sauteed mushrooms in with the onion. I don't think you need to get carried away with that, though, you know? Now, John, just to clarify, not a single person has said it's really good? Not a single person has ever said, why? Are you going to tell me that you don't like this? I said it's really good? No, they said it was really good. Oh, you said the opposite. You know, this guy's trying to trick me, okay? Just pay attention to me. Don't pay attention to this guy. He's the cameraman. Anyway, um, I think in a second, let me take a peek at the bread and how it's doing. It's doing pretty good. All you need to do is get the bread nice and hot and a little bit crispy. So the onions are done enough. The cheese is done. I'm going to move this over to the table in a second. We're taking a flash break here and time elapses. So we'll be back in a minute right now. All right, we got the table set up for you. I, have, I brought the grilled bread over. Now I'm going to pull the bread out of the oven that we just put in there. And it's all bubbling and nice and hot. Come on. This stuff is hot, hot, hot. Okay, you're going to love this item. Now watch this. Look how easy this thing all comes together now. Again, if you want to stage the preparation, so you just cut it into pieces like this so that they're bite-sized, if you will. I'm going to mix the grilled with the roasted just because I happen to have them both. But I wanted you to see the grilled bread, and this is another way of doing it. If you were going to use the grilled bread, I'd pop it right in the oven right now, but I just grilled it a few minutes before we started, so it's still in pretty good shape. Now the trick is, don't lay this out on the plate so that it looks like a bunch of hors d'oeuvres. You want to put this on here and make this troublesome to eat. You want this to be a messy kind of fun thing, okay? So I'm just piling all the bread on there like that. And now um, I'm going to put the, the onion on there. Onion is fun and good. That's enough. And now I got the cheese still in the same pan I just made it in. I'm just gonna pour the cheese over all the bread. You gotta love this, okay? You have got to make this as messy as you can, believe me. So now it becomes a really, it's a fun thing to eat too. You put, you set this out, I guarantee you they're gonna go nuts over this. Okay, now. What I normally do is, this is really cute, I love this. And we put a little bit of tomato, concasse in the middle, that's for color and for fun and for taste. And then I put some fresh crumbled gorgonzola on there to remind them what they're eating. That sauce is made out of that cheese. Don't put too much gorgonzola on there now. And then a little bit of the oil, extra virgin olive oil over the top. And then hit it with a little bit of parsley. And that's a fun thing right there. This is the coolest hors d'oeuvre or appetizer you're going to have here. This is a great item to put on the table for people to share. It's a neat thing to put out on a coffee table while you're having some wine before dinner or for any reason you want, believe me. I have people eat this at, at all different stages and levels of their dinner or lunch. And I have people that come in to the restaurant where I work as a chef now, and they just have wine and eat this stuff, you know. So anyway, there you have it. John's Gorgonzola bread, I guess is the only way to put it. I haven't seen it anywhere else, but if you make it, you'll have it. Good luck with it.